going on you guys? Rob's over the highway here. Happy Sunday. It's almost Monday again, which means we got to get back to work. Today's vlog is my way and my take on small gas powered boat motors. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people out there and, and this vlog's not going to be like, oh, Evan Rude's better than Mercury or this or that or Johnson Evan Rude, same company, right? Don't care. I like Mercury. I like Johnson Evinrude. I own both. The big boat that's on my out front is a Mercury. This is an Evinrude. Two totally different uses here. So what I want to talk about is practicality. And I want to talk about how modern boat motors suck. There's nothing good about any small modern boat motor. Period. Small boat motors. I'm talking about a boat motor that's going to go on a rowboat, right? Because the lakes that we go to in Canada, you can't get a big boat into. Because a lot of cases, you have to walk to get in. You're bushwhacking or whatever, right? you got to be able to haul a boat and a boat motor on your shoulder, right? There's only one boat motor that qualifies to do something like this. And there's other people out there who say, oh, I love my Yamaha, I love my, you know, Suzuki, I love whatever, you know, whatever it is, right? I love my, my three horsepower Mercury. There's one inherent problem with all modern boat motors. They're not water-cooled. For that reason alone, not worth it. There's only one boat motor. Well, there's more than one, right? This is my boat motor. But back in the day, they did it right. It was made in America. Everything's made in China now. So I don't care what, I mean, you I, you could give me $1,000 and I would not sell this boat motor. My dad had this figured out back in 1969, 70, 71 when, when he did this. And after going to Canada with him for two years, I quickly realized he's right. So what did I do? I followed suit and I copied. So we have two of these. I have one, my dad has one. And this bolt motor, it, number one, it starts every time. Number two, it's simple in how it works. Number three, it's water-cooled, so it's quiet. And number four, because it's water-cooled, there's no scalding hot exhaust pipe. Normally they're air-cooled that you can accidentally touch or even worse, when you're out fishing and you catch a fish or you get drifted and you snag and your fishing line comes across that hot exhaust pipe, it melts your line and you lose your lure and you lose a lot of fishing line. Forget all that. This is the right way to do it if you want a bolt motor that's small, quiet, runs well, and is easy to carry and move around. Let's dive right in. So this is a an Evinrude 1902C. It's called a Mate. Okay? This entire boat motor is made out of aluminum. There is plastic here as a plastic shroud, but that's the extent of it. There's no plastic anywhere else on this boat motor. It's all metal. Okay? <clears throat> it's extremely lightweight. I. It, it's classified as one and a half horse. Now some of you guys are going to say, well, that's not big enough. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's be clear. Again, for this purpose, I've got a big honking boat, right? I've got a gas sucking big of a boat that's faster than all get out. But for doing fishing in small lakes that you can't just drive to, this is the right way to do it. A lot of people say, well, I got a three horse, it works better. No, it doesn't because it's not water cooled and it's not quiet and it's made in China. Forget it. Again, going back to the purpose here. This boat motor, like, I would like you to do this on any modern motor. You pick it up here with one hand, and you hold it straight out, right? This motor is so light, you can pick it up, and you can, and you can carry it anywhere you want. And the way it sits, I don't know if you're going to catch this on camera or not, the way it sits is over your shoulder like this. Now, I've got a thing. Now, when you're carrying a boat motor in, you're carrying it over your shoulder, Okay. It has no scalding hot exhaust pipe on it because the exhaust is routed through the center here and it comes out here. When you're operating this bolt motor, this part is in the water up to here. It doesn't get hot. You can run it for hours on end and you can pick it up and run and it's not hot. It's not going to burn you. 
couple other things that are kind of cool, and some some of you might say, "Oh, I don't like that because I don't want to have to do that every time." There's no recoil mechanism. There's no neutral. It's just simple. You turn the thing on the top here, and the and the prop spins. There's no reverse. You don't need it. You just flip it the other way. So that being said, I'm not so concerned about this. Yeah, okay. It's dangerous. It's spinning. Don't touch it. Everything nowadays, you got a label on it. Caution, hot, may burn your lip. As we may well say, remove all the caution labels and let the problem fix itself. If you're stupid enough to touch this thing that's spinning at a high rate of speed, when it's on, you deserve to get hurt. They don't make bull motors like this because safety standards alone wouldn't allow for it. But I'll tell you what, it starts on the first pull every time. It could sit all winter long, start a first pull. There's another thing that this boat motor has that no modern little jap crap three horse motor is going to have. You see that right there? What is this little thing? It turns. What is that? That's a fuel shutoff valve. Most modern boat motors don't have that. So, how do you run a carb dry? Well, you got to take all the gas out of it. It's not ideal. Every time I'm out, before I go and pick this thing up and carry it through a forest, I, tur I, I turn the fuel line off and I run the carb dry. So that way when you're picking it up, moving it all sorts of things, you can't flood the motor. Durability. Again, all metal. These bolt motors are invincible. You can take this bolt motor and you can drop it and it's not going to get broken. It's been, my dad's got one. It's been dropped. You're hiking through the forest, you trip on a branch, and the bow motor goes down and you fall. All these Jap crap motors and these other plastic made in China motors are all made out of plastic. As soon as you drop it, it's going to get broke. So, yeah, again, the housing's plastic, but so what? It's simplistic in how it works. It's got all metal. Even the, even the, even the gas cap is metal. It isn't plastic, it's metal. It's like billet aluminum. The whole thing just works, and it works very well, right? You just wrap this cord around here and give it a yank, and it starts. And it's just simple in how it works. It's just simple. It just works. Everything's metal. So, again, there's other ways of doing things out there, but for small motors and for, and for fishing... This thing's a 1969, right? Like, I was born in 87. It's older than me. But you know what? It's better than any other small gas motor out there. You're not going to be able to get a three-horsepower motor for less than about six to $800. It's going to be made in China, and it's going to suck. And it isn't going to work for beans. If you keep your eye out on eBay, you can get a motor like this. There are not a lot of them out there, but they are out there. I had to wait about six months of waiting for eBay safe searches, and I found one. And the 1902 is not the only model. There's a 1002. So my point is, is there's motors out there that are old and ancient, like this one. They're better. They're better than any modern motor. And they are water-cooled. There's an impeller pump in this mechanism here. By the way, you have exhaust here. You also have exhaust here. The water is pumped up through here. It's pumped up into the motor through a little tube, and it comes back out. I have taken this entire thing apart down to the bare minimum, and the water impeller from 1969, it's the original, is perfectly fine. They're, they're just bulletproof. They, they don't go bad. They, they just work. So if you're looking for a bolt motor that's going to be reliable and that's not going to weigh a ton and that's going to be quiet and isn't going to burn the crap out of your hand from an air-cooled, this is the motor you want. Now the downside, some of the modern motors are four-stroke, so you don't have to mix oil and gas. So I agree that that's more convenient. And I agree that it pollutes the environment less. But for this, for what we're doing, this is the only motor you would ever want. There is no better motor out there. And I know this because I have physically used other little three horsepower motors 
Game Fisher, Mercury, even the new Evan Rose and Johnsons. They're all crap. They're all made in China and they all suck. And they don't start on the first pull and they're junk. This is the right way to do it and this is my way. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, favorite. Appreciate everyone's time.